Hello, Healthy Pets family. Happy President's Day. We wanted to jump on and do a quick Facebook Live. Our inboxes are broken with people saying, we have a pandemic puppy and we are also on a budget and we were wondering how we can improve our dog or cat's nutritional status on a budget. So I am here at the Creators Lounge and welcome Rodney Abib. Thanks for hosting me again. Thank you for having me, Dr. Karen Becker. And happy holidays to my fellow Canadians that are also watching. This is your last week here in Nova Scotia. We are going to miss you. Um, and yes, we want to talk today about the most nutritious superfood in the entire world. You are totally missing out if this is not going into your puppy, your senior dog, your adult, your cat dog, whatever it is, your kids. Eggs are super, super important. But the problem is not very many people, Dr. Becker, want to do eggs because of all of the myths that are online. Like, check it out right here. This is WebMD. WebMD says, look, feeding your dog raw eggs or eggs dangerous whether yeah. it says raw or not it confuses a lot of pet parents check out the aspca website they never update their website they will now we look, hope <laughs> look right here eggs uh potentially dangerous raw eggs are potentially dangerous for your dogs watch out for avidin what's going on with avidin yeah so there's two reasons that that's the good news is that the vast majority of websites Rodney and i did a facebook live about three years ago and thank goodness all of the websites that were carrying misinformation about eggs most of them corrected them aspca remains one of the last websites that still has a lot of egg myths on their website corrected aspca if you're watching two big concerns about eggs pertaining to feeding them to pets. People's first concern is Avidin. So our last Facebook Live, we spent about 50 minutes talking about Avidin, what it is, why you don't have to fear it. We went over the research, uh, why those bizarre myths got started. Avidin in general is a, is a biotin, a B7 binding protein that's found in the white, uh, the white part of an uncooked egg. And there's a lot of myths out there as to why you should fear Avidin. We put all of those myths to rest in our last Facebook Live, which we'll post a link to below. The second big issue that most pet parents fear and the one that's still on ASPCA website is, oh my gosh, what about salmonella? Now the good news is in 2011, the Journal of Veterinary Internal Medicine provided a really great study going over the fact that salmonella, the bacteria that can be found in eggs certainly, is naturally uh, uh, found in the GI tracts of dogs and cats, even of healthy GI, GI tracts. So in fact, I printed some stats for you that should help put your mind to rest when it comes to salmonella and dogs and cats. What this journal article showed is that isolation of salmonella is common even among healthy dogs and cats. In fact, up to 51.4% of healthy dogs harbor salmonella naturally in their GI tract frequently isolated from healthy dogs and sick dogs at the same prevalence, which means healthy and sick dogs can both harbor salmonella, but we know that dogs and cats, that this can be a natural component of the GI tract. Isolation of salmonella from, do from a dog or cat does not mean that there's a cause or effect because you found it. And most importantly, if you have a concern, like if you have an immunosuppressed person in your house and you're nervous about salmonella, there is now a brand new pasturation process called in-shell pasteurization that allows in shell eggs to become sterile. So you really don't have anything to fear about the salmonella issue with dogs and cats, but that may not be true with people. But I have a question. You've consumed a lot of raw eggs in your life. If we're not so nervous about the salmonella issue with dogs and cats, what about people? Like how can people eat raw eggs yeah. and not die? Uh, tons of people get freaked out by raw eggs. Of course, if you know, just looking at it, you know, it's got that slimy look and that slimy texture to it. And literally, if you had the conversation with like bodybuilders, bodybuilders like Arnold Schwarzenegger or uh, Sylvester Stallone, they would laugh at the fact that not a lot of people are freaked out by raw, raw eggs, especially like Europeans around the world. Look, if you're eating things like hollandaise sauce, pies, cookie dough, mayo, you know when you make it at home, there's raw egg ingredient in it. So, you know, it's not that big of a concern for people culturally around the world. Here's a study that just came out that talks about like one in 30,000 eggs were contaminated. This isn't super new. It came out in 20, 2002, but there's so many more advancements to technologies where we don't really have to worry that bad. But if you do, hey, easy cook the egg. Yeah. Gently cook, or you can buy these new pasteurized eggs that make the egg completely salmonella free. There's a lot of reasons why eggs really are hailed as a superfood. And we want to go over those with you now. Now, 
for a lot of people out there, when you're looking for protein, let's just stick with protein in general, everybody goes running to like meat, right? When it comes to your dogs and cats, logically you think if you have to infuse protein in the food, this is where you're gonna head to. But hold on, science says it's not so much meat you should be looking at. Check out this study right here, biological values of common foods. Look at eggs all the way up at the top, 100% when it comes to biological value, taking out like fish, taking out meats and things like that. Eggs are incredible. But if we look under the hood, I could look, I couldn't fit everything into that list. Look at all the vitamins. Look at all of the minerals that are there in eggs, making them epic. But my favorite. I have to clear the room for this one. To Dr. Karen Becker's fans, please don't troll me every single time I hold up a sign and you say I cut off Dr. Karen Becker. We are in a very confined space We're here. We're working in a two feet area, but I'm going to scoot out of the way because you Bear have with a me. magnificent yeah. prop. Bear with me, baby boomers. No need for the hate mail. One of the things that I love about eggs, look. The egg itself, according to researchers, the all the amino acids that you kind of need. Now, there's 22 amino acids out there in the science world. Board certified veterinary nutritionists will tell you there's 20 that are essential to dogs and cats. But we have, excuse me, 20 that dogs and cats need. But the essential ones, dogs and cats, 10 for dogs, 11 for cats. It's all there. I couldn't fit um, taurine on the bottom for cats. Sorry, the list is too big. But it has all of the essential yeah. amino acids. Yeah. So taurine is found in eggs, not in enough to meet a dog or cat's requirement, but it's in there. So it really literally is a complete protein for dogs and cats. Now, there's lots of different types of eggs besides chicken eggs that are totally safe to feed dogs and cats. There are little tiny eggs like quail eggs, quail, chicken, duck, turkey, geese eggs. All, all of the eggs that you can find at your local farmer's markets are completely safe and nutritious to feed dogs and cats. The cool thing about all these different sizes is you can kind of match them up to your dog. So little, you know, little dogs and cats, quail eggs are about 14 calories an egg. They're perfect size. They're like bite-sized snacks for smaller critters. Obviously, like a chicken egg is 72 calories, a great size snack for the 30 pound dog and you can work your way up. Some eggs can be hard to find, but all are safe and appropriate. If your dog or cat has an allergy to chicken eggs, you can try a different type of egg and see how they do. It really is the world's most perfect protein. <laughs> I just smashed my eggs. Yeah, there's just the stuff all over. Now, Dr. Becker, I will say this. I always get freaked out. Clean up here is a nightmare. I will say this. There's a study that came out, came out about Cambridge about how important it is when it comes to the type of hen. According to Cambridge, when you're buying uh, eggs, you really want to look out for either caged or pastured hens because there's a difference. In fact, pastured hens, more vitamin A, more vitamin E, and more fatty acids. Yeah, so what, what Ronnie's talking about is that how the chickens were raised matters to the nutritional content of the eggs that they make. And that makes sense, right? Happy, healthy chickens would have healthier eggs, which kind of makes logical sense. But when you buy a box of eggs, the verbiage can be a little confusing. So let me just go over the verbiage, the verbiage with you. Cage free on a container means that the animals, the chickens have had the option to go outside. Uh, free range, I'm sorry, free range means that the chickens can go outside. Cage free can be very tricky. Cage free guys can mean actually that they're all these chickens are crammed into a dark, like a big barn, but still dark, still can't move, still in unhealthy breathing conditions. So cage free can be a little bit of a, tricky misnomer. It's it's not really what you envision to what a chicken would have a happy, healthy life. Omega-3 supplemented eggs means that those chickens have been fed feed that contain probably flax. Yes. Let me jump in with this very quickly. How For those omega-3 buffs, is there really a difference between omega-3 and conventional eggs? Check out the study that you see right here. Omega-3 eggs compared to conventional and organic, five times more omega-3 now that's veggie omega-3, but that's ALA, alpha linolenic acid, which dogs and cats still need. So it's still an important thing that you can feed. Those high omega-3 eggs are really good for dogs and cats. Pasture raised eggs means that chickens were able to roam free and eat their natural food source like bugs and plants, which makes the eggs even more nutritious. Organic on, uh, on a package, and I'll hold this if you wanna show that organic, uh, like if you see organic on a, on a carton, Organic means that the chickens ate organic feed. Now, if you see nothing on a package, what it means is that those chickens were kept in tiny cages and fed grain, probably full of glyphosate and maybe genetically modified. If that matters to you, then you're not going to buy conventionally raised eggs. Now, 
pasteurized eggs are different than pastured eggs. Obviously, pasteurized eggs means that they've been heated to kill off salmonella. Pastured eggs means that those chickens went outside and you know had fresh air and sunshine and ate bugs. So there's a big nutritional difference between the types of eggs that you are buying. So be aware of that. But there's also a big difference, Rodney, in how the eggs are cooked or not cooked. The ongoing debate in the world, and this yes. is where like nutritionists will battle the heads, battle heads, smash heads, when it comes to the egg. What is better when you're dealing with eggs? Is it raw or is it cooked? That's ultimately the best way to eat an egg. Now look, check it out, raw eggs. 33% more omega-3, more vitamin D, more DHA, more biotin, more zinc, more choline. The eggs are packed with nutrition when they are in a raw state. But hold on. Science jumped in a while back ago. Check out this study here. See where it says digestibility of cooked and raw egg products. Apparently, the study found that 90% of protein in cooked eggs was absorbed, but only 50% in raw eggs. In other words, protein in cooked eggs was 80% more digestible. Nothing like a prop malfunction. Prop down. Nobody likes a prop malfunction. But this is Justin Timberlake. But this is really interesting about because what I didn't realize is cooked whites actually increase the, the protein the availability that you can pass up the food chain. So the goal is to feed cooked whites, removes the avidin, and increases digestibility. But you want to feed not cooked yolks. So how do you do that? How do you gently cook a white and not cook the yolk? Thank you for teeing me up and foreshadowing, Dr. Thank Karen Thank you for Becker. buying the best prop ever. <laughs> Let's talk about the seven best ways, according to nutritionists and scientists, to prepare eggs for your dogs and cats at home, and even yourself, yeah. if you're eating eggs. So we're going to start at the very worst. The bottom. The bottom of the pile, number seven. My Check favorite. Check it out. Dr. Karen Becker's favorite, scrambled eggs. Now, when you heat these up in this manner... They might be delicious, but you're kind of destroying all of the nutrition value that's there because the amount of heat. Now, at number six, the kind of worst way, not as bad as scrambled, would be sunny side up. Excuse me, not sunny side up, but over easy. This is where, unlike sunny side up, you're actually frying both sides. So it's still not kind of like, you know, the most ideal way to do things. That was not a prop. That was a real egg. This is not my house. I'm number so glad this is not my studio. Good luck with your cleaning. But... Number six, uh, number five, the five. This is, here we go, the sunny side up way. Look, it does take some frying back here in the back, so there is some damage that's happening to the protein and the white, and then the vitamins and the yolk are being damaged because of the heat as well. Next up. Do you notice I didn't throw that one? I was gonna say, we could just, we're just gonna let the dogs clean up after this, they'll All be right. fine. <laughs> Leave the frying process. So this brings us down to number four on the list, which would be leaving the frying pan, getting into the boiled method, and look, the hard boiled egg. This one is, is cooked, boiled a lot, I should say. So kind of, you know, it's a little bit dry because of the time. But according to scientists, the nutrition isn't as damaged as the frying pan, which leads us all the way back to the raw egg. Now, the raw egg, as we had mentioned before, nutrition's here, there's been no heat, there's been no damage but you're not really absorbing all of the protein, only 50% when it's in its raw state, according to nutrition. So how do we up that and make it even better? Would you like a towel? I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Introducing the poached egg, as my American friends would say, poached here in Canada. The poached egg, although this was damaged during, it's another prop malfunction, sorry. Now, this was boiled, so not so much heat. You can see still creamy on the inside, still a little bit R creamy raw. on the outside, yeah. right? And this is how you're going to get even more nutrition because look, because the white is a little bit cooked, not so much, your dog's able, to, or cat's able to absorb all of the protein. And finally, the best way, according to nutritionists, if you're looking for total vitamin value, if you're looking for total protein value, I didn't know this. The soft boiled egg hmm. in knew? its gooiness and in its glory. Check it out, like you're boiling it, but it's still not fully damaged yeah. by heat. Basically like a partially boiled, gently boiled egg is, science says, the most nutritious way 
to eat an egg. Now, Rodney, how do you store eggs? Well, Dr. Karen Becker, I'm glad you asked me that question. I bought this refrigerator. It's a very cute prop. Just for this prop today. Actually, to the man who sold it to me from Australia, it's missing some parts. Ooh, we're gonna have a conversation later. But that being said, now check it out. According to the FDA, when you've got your eggs in the refrigerator, oh my. three to five weeks, you wanna look at the best before date according to the FDA. Now farmers aren't really big fans of this. Farmers will tell you that you can actually push your eggs up to five weeks when they're in the refrigerator. But look at the best before date, three to four weeks if you wanna follow the FDA guidelines. Now, let's say you don't wanna throw your eggs away and you want to keep them preserved a little bit longer and you go into your freezer. Did you know, Dr. Becker, you can freeze eggs to keep them stored in the freezer. I Listen, if you're gonna freeze eggs, don't freeze them in plastic. Freeze them in a non-toxic, like metal. No yeah. problem. But I didn't know, I did not know that you could freeze eggs. In fact, these, these are frozen quail eggs. Yeah, quail eggs that you can buy from the pet store typically come in frozen, like I said. But one of the biggest challenges when it comes to freezing eggs is people do not like to freeze eggs because of the egg with the shell on, because they say basically the shell will crack rupture. and it can seep and rupture and, and yeah. make a giant mess. No problem, you can take them out of the shell when you go to freeze them. And look, up to one year in the freezer that they last. So if you, if you let's say you go to your farmer's market and there's like some type of run on geese eggs and you're never gonna find them again, buy three or four dozen and freeze them. All right, now the ultimate question, a lot of raw feeders wanna know, what do you do with the byproduct of these eggs? Should you be throwing these eggs away and then what about this oh, magical thing one of my favorite right parts here. of the egg so this is called eggshell membrane and it the it's nature's one of the best joint supports you could feed your dogs and cats puppies and kittens need joint support to proactively and preventively prevent joint degeneration from occurring midlife senior and older dogs absolutely need joint support because they've got articular degeneration they've got arthritis starting so eggshell membrane is loaded with collagen glucosamine chondroitin and hyaluronic acid it's nature perfect joint support. So don't throw those shells out. If you wanted to crunch those shells up, you can feed the egg shell with the egg membrane. Egg shells have about 800 milligrams of calcium carbonate and about 27 other trace minerals that can be passed right up the food chain. So feed the whole, grind up the egg shells and don't throw them up. Now here's the thing, it's eggs. Of course, we look at it as a great food, but did you know that it doesn't just have to be a food, it can be an incredible treat for your trainers out there that are training your dogs. If you wanna ramp up that brain, you wanna ramp up that dog's nutrition, or if you're walking in the woods with your dog or your cat, eggs can be a treat. Tell us a little bit about the benefits of choline. Well, choline is one of the big reasons that I push eggs. It's so, it's really important. Eggs are cheap. You can find them anywhere, but they're such a good way to really incrementally improve the nutrition of whatever you're feeding your dog or cat. Choline is a really important nutrient that especially if your dogs or cats are eating any type of ultra processed food, Choline is something that your dog or cat could be short on. And choline is super important for cell synthesis, cell structure, fat metabolism, muscle health, and especially brain development and cognition. For So for those young puppies and kittens and your older dogs, they literally need a lot of supplemental choline, in my opinion, to keep their brains healthfully developing and steady and strong to prevent cognitive decline later on. I created a recipe several years ago that I wanted to share with you. They're called choline crisps. It's a great way to literally make a tr egg treat. Dogs and cats love them. Uh, and I use them regularly for training treats and you can make them easily. There's a recipe at foreverdog.com. They're called choline crisps and I use them all the time for training treats. It's a great way to deliver not only all of those nutrients that Rodney talked about, but a little bit of choline to your dog or cat on a daily basis. So. Head on over to foreverdog.com for the choline crisp recipe. Thank you guys so much for joining us. As always, Facebook world, thank you for tuning in. Happy holidays to my American friends. Happy holidays to my North American Canadian friends and all of North America and whatever else you want to add in there.